Hello, all wonderful people out there. This is Kevin from CZ Pipe here, where we focus on productivity and pipeline for creatives. And it's time to take a look at interactivity in InDesign, which I think is a really underrated set of features right at your fingertips. And in this two part, two part series, I will show you how to make an interactive presentation, which we'll be doing in this video, and then a follow up with some form fields as well, all using InDesign. So what do I mean by interactivity? Well, in this case, I'm referring to adding user functionality, effects and multimedia to your documents. And for this tutorial, I picked out some features I thought would be relevant for a presentation. And uh, we'll be looking at page transitions, animations, adding video, links and buttons. And then exporting it all and the pros and cons of PDF versus the publish online feature. And why is this something worth knowing? Well, speaking as a designer and Adobe user, I much prefer using InDesign instead of something like PowerPoint or Keynote. And by including interactive features, you can make just as appealing presentations with InDesign and still use the tool you know and love. And of course, presentations are only one of the things you could use this for. I use links and buttons for all sorts of interactive PDFs and publish online lets you make a whole publication available online where you could also leverage these functionalities. But let's not delay any further and jump over to InDesign. Here I have my presentation, all prepared and the layout ready to go, but no features added yet. So that's what we need to add. And the first thing we're going to do is make sure we have all the panels we need. And I made a custom layout already, but you'll find all these panels under Window and Interactive right over here. We're also going to need the Layer panel quite a bit and the Pages panel as well. I thought we'd start with something simple and in PowerPoint, you probably know that you can add page transitions. Well, we can do that here as well. Simply select the desired pages, then go to the page transitions panel, then pick a preset you like from the list. That's all you need to do. However, it won't show up here. So we need to export it to PDF and view in full screen to preview it. So let's try that. We just press control D, choose interactive PDF, and over here, you can change the transitions as well, but we'll set it to as document and then just export it. In Acrobat, you press control L for full screen. And if we switch pages, we should now see the effect. We do. Great, back to InDesign. Next up are animations. To start us off, let's jump over to Firefox where I have a published version of this. And as you can see, the menu bar animates in on page load. So let's set that up. And the menu bar is in the master over here. And uh, we want it to animate to come in from the left. And we select it and move over to the animations panel. And uh, this is a preset uh, based thing. So you select one of them and make changes if needed. And right here in the list, we have fly in. And that sounds about right. And we want it on page load. One second is fine. And we can also leave the opacity fade here as well. So I won't adjust much here, but uh, play around with these settings on your own and discover what's possible. And you can also name your animations, which can be a good thing to do. We are, however, going to make one adjustment. But first, let's preview this, which we can do with the EPUB preview. And we won't be making an EPUB, but we can still use it to see the results. And for that, press Shift, Alt, and Enter. And in this window, we just press play down here. And now we should see our animation. And it looks about right. But I want a frame to start animating in entirely from outside of the page. And for that, we can simply adjust this animation path, which has been created for us. So I want to select this point and drag it further out so that it starts there. And this is the center point, so it should be at least negative half the width which is minus 960 in this case. And now if we preview again, shift alt enter, play, and it should animate it all the way from outside the page, which it does. The next animation we're going to do is fading in the text and uh, we select it. Then from the list, we choose fade in. And I'm also going to name it setup fade in. And the only thing I want to change is to delay this a bit so that it animates after the header. And for that, we go over to the timings panel. 
and we select the item in the list. By the way, if you name your animations up here, it's easier to keep track of them. And now we can add a delay. In two seconds should be good. Just preview and make sure it does what we want. It should. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, this I want to do for all the pages, but I won't be showing the same process all over again. Next up are videos. This isn't very complicated. You just place it like you would with an image. Control D for place. And I'm going to grab this one and uh, paste it in a frame. I have already made one and uh, then just size it correctly. Now with the video frame selected, we can look at the media panel. And here we now have some options. Maybe I want to play on page load. We can uh, preview and pick a frame we like to use for a thumbnail. So I'll go to the end here and then we can just click here to set the thumb. And we can also preview this with the EPUB viewer. Let that load. Go. And you can see that we get some UI for the video as well with the play buttons, etc. And by the way, note that videos work great when using Publish Online, but barely at all for PDFs in my experience. So I would simply avoid that and use links instead. Which leads us to the next thing I want to add. Links or hyperlinks is probably something most people are familiar with. So we'll just briefly go through how to add it to your document. And there is a panel for it. And uh, to create one, simply select a desired text or object. And I'm going to go for the logo that I have right here in the master. And then in the panel, go to the menu and choose new hyperlink. And this will be a link to the channel. So we make sure to set it to a URL and then just paste in the link. As you can see in the list as well, there are plenty of other things you can link to. And if you apply it to text, you can also use a character style as well. But since we selected an image that is grayed out right now, and that's really all there is to it. The logo is now a hyperlink to the channel on YouTube. Next up, and I think I probably saved the best for last, buttons. And even though that may not sound too exciting, it opens up a lot of possibilities. And if we go back to the published document, I'll show you what I'll be making. First, notice the menu bar up here. When I hover over an item, it gets bolded. And if I click on one of them, it takes me to that page. That is made with buttons. And the other thing we're going to make with buttons is right here. This uh, button triggers an animation, like so. And if we click again, it reverses. And also notice how the button changes when we click. Okay, that's what we'll be setting up. And we can start with the menu bar, which once again is in the master. And for this, we're going to want the buttons panel and the layer panel. And uh, all the headings are located here in this layer. And I also went ahead and grouped them. And here's the thing, I really recommend naming your layers when working with buttons. It helps keeping track of things. And in case you didn't know, you just triple click and you can rename any item in the layers panel. First, we make sure the layer is selected. And then we head over to the buttons panel and under type, choose button. And notice how this has been grouped among the layers and the box is highlighted differently. This is now a button, and now we need to decide what it should do. To do that, we press the plus here under actions, and we want to go to a certain page, so we can simply choose go to page, and then type in the correct page number down here. However, going back to the actions dropdown, notice how it says EPUB slash publish online only. That means this will not work in a PDF, and if you're not making a PDF, this is fine. But if you are, or perhaps you want it to work for both, this is what we do instead. First, select this action in the list and remove it by clicking on the minus. OK on that one. And instead, we're going to add this action. Go to destination. And down here, we can choose destinations. But that list is empty, and that's because we need to create it ourselves. In practice, that means an object on the desired page that we define as the destination. And I also touched upon this in my cross-reference video on screen right now. Okay then, if we go back to, for example, page two, I've already made a suitable text box here that we can use as a destination. Simply select it and head over to hyperlinks panel once more. 
And under the options, we then click on new hyperlink destination. The type will be page and we can name it with the page number, that is fine. And uh, then lastly, make sure it's the correct page. In this case, it will be page two and okay. That's our destination. Now we can go back to the buttons in the master. Remember, we choose go to destination for our action. And now we just need to set our destination, which should now be in the list, which it is page two. Finally, we need to create the hover effect. And notice how we are currently set to normal down here under appearance. That means how the button looks right now is its normal state. So what we need to do is switch this to rollover. Now, whatever changes we make to the appearance will be how the button looks on hover. So I'm just going to select the button and choose this style, bold and done for me. And by toggling between normal and rollover, we should see how it changes back and forth to bold. We can also preview this with the EPUB viewer, I'll load. And uh, now we have a hover effect, very cool. That was of course only one menu item, but it's the exact same process for the rest of them and it's a bit tedious to show them all, but let me know in the comments if you have any problems with this and I'll try and answer. All right, that was the menu bar. Last thing before publishing, the animation button. I've already made the actual animation using the exact same method as we did for the menu bar. Now we need to set up the button as a trigger. In the layer panel, I have two buttons, one for show and one for hide. And for now, we're going to hide away the hide button and select the show button here. And like we did before in the buttons panel, choose type button, name it, I'll call it show slide in. And this time for actions, we're going to choose animation down here. Next, we tell it what animation to trigger. And remember, I said it's a good idea to name your animation. Here's yet a reason why. Now we need to select it in the list down here. And we want it to trigger play, which is already selected for us. We also need to make one adjustment to the original animation. So we select the frame and go back to the animations panel. And here you can see that we now have two events. Make sure that you remove the on page load from the events. You can just uncheck it by clicking on it and leaving only the on button event. So let's preview this. Give InDesign a second. And uh, there we go. So we press the button and uh, our animation plays. Very cool. However, if we click again, you can see it only replays the animation once more. So the next step is to set up the hide button. To do that, we locate and reveal the hidden frame in the layer panel with the hide button. Then we repeat the same process by selecting it and uh, choosing button, naming it. Uh, I'll call it hide slide in. And then we choose animation. But this time for options, we're going to choose reverse. Lastly, we need to make sure only one button is visible at a time. And to do that, we need to add another action to the same button. So starting with selecting show, then click the plus, And now we need this one called show hide buttons and forms. And once again, it helps if we have named our buttons because under visibility, we now have a list of buttons on this page. And the way to think about this is what should be visible when you click on the button. So when we click on show, that one should no longer be visible because then we want the hide button to be available. And you can just click on the I button to toggle the settings. And I'll set show to not visible and set hide to visible. Then we set up the opposite for the hide button. We select it and we add the uh, second action and we set show to visible and hide to not visible. Then there is just one more thing we need to do. The hide button gets hidden when you click on it, but that means on page load, it will show. So we need to check this box right here, hidden until triggered. And that should be all. Let's try this out with the preview. Just give InDesign a moment. Now we can click and the animation runs and the button changes. And if we click again, it reverses and the button changes back. Perfect.
Okay, that was a long breakdown. Now all we need to do is export this somehow. And I already showed how to export it to an interactive PDF. However, note that our animations won't work for a PDF. And while the buttons should work in Acrobat and Reader, they won't work uh, in all other platforms. So for this project, I put features that won't work in PDF in a separate layer so that I can easily hide it when exporting it. What we can do instead is to use the publish online feature. So simply save and go up to share in the top right. And here it is, publish online. And we get the usual suspects when exporting. Choose whether to export a new document or update an existing right here. And I want all the pages and for it to show as pages, not spreads. And there are also some advanced settings over here when I can set a thumbnail and adjust resolution and so forth. And when we are happy with it, just press publish. Then InSun will make this into HTML5 and upload it to Adobe servers. And when it's done, you'll get the link to the web page. Also, if you want to keep track of your documents published online, simply go to file and then publish online dashboard. And this will take you to this web page with all your documents. And here you can share and delete them, but also get stats for each project, which is quite nice. And I've also added the link to the final presentation in the description, along with the link to the package InDesign document as well. And that's all. Hope you found this useful and interesting and good luck with your presentation.